and welcome to part two of this Cosmo CS60 which we're going to recap and uh, sort out a few of its problems uh, so I've st stripped out the uh, the old capacitors and I've lifted that uh, big resistor up there that, that big wire wound and you can see all this carbon on the board so first job is to clean all that off and uh, get that all nice and uh, clean so we can uh, get the new caps in um, just show you they've got the caps there we go so we've got F and T's to go in this that's a double one that goes further down the line so we've got these there we go you see that F and T's it's upside down never mind 47 at 500 volts working so we've got four of those and each pair goes in series that's how these work um, and then we've got to go on down the line we've got some more um, capacitors to fit we've got the bias to sort out and then one or two plate resistors bits and bobs as well and then this big resistor of course which we're moving out onto this board sorry we're moving off this board uh, and onto the chassis and we're going to be using this, 20, this uh, 50 watt 25k uh, resistor the 25,000 ohms he fits just have a look back out of the zoom he fits he's going to fit there I'm going to um, bolt him down with some heat sink paste and job will be a good one right so I've got the caps more or less here they just need terminal soldering um, and I've also if we get around this um, just around the back here if you just zoom in I've put some new diodes in there they have replaced these um, VY 127s and just we just move back so just zoom in the BY 127s they work fine but they've been in there 50 years so I think uh, that and I always do this standard some people leave them in it's up to them personal per, personal thing but for me you can just see them in there the new ones I always swap them they've been in 50 years they, they don't cost a lot of money do they it's and while you've got the caps out and everything might as well just change them and uh, it's all um, it's all brand new again those caps uh, uh, they're sorry those diodes are quite highly rated as well I forget what the voltage is but it's way over what this amp is and so is the current uh, current handling of them as well so uh, while I'm, I'm what I'm doing is I'm um, I'm working my way across um, from this from this end to the preamp side so I've got this resistor up that we've uh, um, our soldering iron and um, that is fed from that eyelet there and I've cleaned the board the board's just burnt now just black burnt with years of uh, heat and then that terminal there feeds on a, a wire all the way down to that transistor leg there and that drops that to 20 volts you've got something like going back to here again you've got something like I know 400 and 430 440 and it drops it all the way down to 20 volts so there's a massive amount of current on that so we're going to take a couple of wires Solder them into the eyelets because the, on this one, the last one, the eyelets were virtually destroyed. They were loose in the board, but on this one, they, they're still pretty good. So, what I'm going to do is solder into the eyelets, bring the wires underneath the board, bring them up to here, and then we're going to drill out and put that, um, put our friend on there, um, and he gets just about lukewarm when when this amps when these amps are running correctly. So we've got some um, single core 18 gauge. Um, cable uh, wire for that so we're going to use this is what we're going to use so remember if you're going to put these onto the chassis a nice bit of heat sink paste is also a good one and the other thing is is remember the washers either some star washers or I've got some locking nuts for these um, don't want it coming loose so that's what uh, there we are we're just going to bolt that down 
and job will be a squirrel. Right, moving on down now. I've got the resistor installed and I've got the uh, heat sink paste on that and it's bolted down. He's wired up. Um, so now I'm moving on to this capacitor here. This is a dual 3333. Um, it's for the preamp section. And uh, I've got that silicon down. So it's uh, nice and secure. Got some silicon underneath. Now I've got these two dropping resistors. I've changed 22K. I've got a metal film, 3 watt, um, and I've got a 2 watt. That was actually 1 watt before, but I've got a 2 watt, um, sorry, metal oxide, 22K. Sorry about that camera. 22K, metal film, 47K. The 47 was out of tolerance. Um, the uh, 22 wasn't, but it looked a bit charred, and it's always nice to put a metal oxide in there. While we're doing this, mice was changed those, and notice I've left, I've mounted them off the board so they can get plenty of air around them. The last time they were pushed down onto the board, and the board is a bit blackened where that 22k was, so that just helps to give them a bit of air. Um, so try not if you have your mounting, if you have put resistors in, try not to leave them flat onto the board. Just lift them a little bit like that. So there we go, so I'm just going to solder all that up now and I've got a few more bits to solder up in here Just and, and I like to try and crown these eyelets if I can to make them look nice, can't always do it on these little ones but uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's all of that so when I've got that in, I've got 16 microfarad over there to change, which and he's, his uh, sibling is there so that's that and then we've got the screen resistors to change and there's that burnt one there if you remember who we're looking at he's toast and then we're going to have a look at this bias section here um, we've got that one meg resistor why why just why so we've got to get all that out. and I think that's 180k I'll check on the schematic but I'm pretty sure I've done enough of these 180k and while we're at it we'll have a new diode in there and uh, that'll all be brand new then so there we are that section of the amplifier is now completed and uh, if we just hone in look at these joints see how I've crowned them up just to make them look nice um, just a cosmetic thing really but it just it, it just looks good so I've put 180k resistor in there which is what should be in there um, that's 5 watts, that's the only one I had, so it's a bit overkill, it should be about 3 watts I think. And we've got a new diode in there as well, so that's all, all brand new. So all, from all the way now, from here across to there, has all been replaced. And then we've got our, again our resistor there for the, um, for the reverb. So n now I've got, just to show you, I've got a nice pair of wire wound uh, 1k 5 watt resistors and they are to, re to replace those screen resistors there's the one that's toast and then there's the other one there so that's for those so we're going to make a start of that now as well um, don't think I've got a cap for the bias um, Gonna have to order one of those I think I've run out of those I'll have a search around but that's not looking good so I'll have to order one of those we've got that 60 microfarad there which you can see that's ready to be changed and um, there's a little um, electrolytic there and I'm not sure what that does for a minute or two without having a look and then we've got a couple of cathode bypass capacitors there and then we've got a couple more there and again I'm not 100% they look like there's something to do with the reverb section so we've got those there smoothing for the reverb so we need to look at those as well they'll have to be changed and then the only other thing that I need to change on this amp are those two resistors there, those are for the phase inverter and um, they're out of tolerance 
uh, big time so they've got to be sorted out as well and then I'm going to check all the rest of the plate resistors I do have a tendency to replace plate resistors because if they're not noisy now after 50 years you could usually find that in six months time one of them's noisy and they're all carbon comps so those uh, old carbon comps so I may just replace those and uh, I may sort out some of uh, Mr Laycross's work as well while I'm at it which is factory we've now established that the lying across the islets is factory so I'll press on do a bit more right I've done a bit more on this Carlsborough and um, we've replaced those screen resistors there and there just hone in there and the other one so those are done um, this is all complete now this power supply um, so I'm replacing these 100 uh, nanofarad caps which go to the uh, um, there's a couple of caps to the L34s, one of them slightly leaky, the other one's fine, but I'm going to change the pair. It's ever so slightly leaky, but if it's starting to leak, I don't want this amp coming back. It, the guy uses them regular for, for gigging and they've got to be right. So we're going to change those. Um, I'm out of stock of those, would you believe? Um, yes, that's a, a bit of a plank moment running out of those so I've been over here we're now fitting this item here the 60 microfarad um, and we're going to sort this mess out I've pulled the cap from there that that mess there so we're going to sort that out uh, change the plate resistor there I'm going to change all the plate resistors in this amp um, these wires that they've laid across on, on some of these eyelets being so narrow you can't get in fact I'll show you one that I've actually sewed us up there so you can see they're quite small so you're struggling to get the wires in if you've got like two components in a wire so what I've done there I've, I've wrapped that around the resistor and soldered it the wire's really crappy. As soon as you touch it with the iron, the plastic melts on it. They're garbage. Um, pop that one in the eyelet. Work my way across. I shall pop these in. Just, just to uh, and tidy that soldering up. I need to crown that. Um, I just work my way across. Looks like that one there. Sorry there. You just when you look at that, it just, it just looks garbage. And it's like that they've cut the wires that short as well it's, it's quite hard to get them in the holes now I found a couple of capacitors for these two misters here that's going to be these and they are 25 microfarad at, oh no sorry they're 50 microfarad at 25 volts and these are 47 at 35 volts so they'll be most delightful for there so we'll get those in we've got attention to these two resistors here for on the phase inverter they both need changing and um, there'll be one or two other plate resistors kicking around but, uh, I'll trace out we'll replace those we've got to replace this capacitor here not sure what value they are something in back of my mind says about 2.5 microfarad which is a bit of a weird one and then there's another one of those up there and then that pretty much and then obviously I'm waiting for a cap for the bias which I've ordered yesterday tested this uh, 50 peak farad cap here that tests fine of course you never know what they're going to be like under load but it tests fine on the on the capacitance tester and I think pretty much I'm just going to have a, a bit of a hone through and make sure that none of these resistors are massively out of tolerance I know last, the last one of these will work to remember I said these were grid biased and not cathode biased these um, preamp stages and these and you can see one over there in the corner so just move this wire out of the way the, 
that they can see these who won't you get this on grid bias so that is 3.3 meg uh, and some of these were massively out of tolerance on the last one I did there's two there there's another 3.3 meg so we need to be checking those as well to make sure they're not uh, out of tolerance but we we're we're getting through it now we're a good way through it um, so hopefully soon we'll be firing it up and uh, t checking the bias on it I'm going to test the preamp valves and uh, make sure they're all most delightful and of course there's this the mystery of this tape this tape around this fuso let's see what that's all about shall we just why just why I'm always dubious when I see electrical tape of what we're going to find underneath it really is shite I don't understand why anybody uses I mean don't get me wrong if I'm doing if I'm testing things and I just want to put some wires together and make them safe I'll use electrical tape but that's all it's really good for just temporary things that you know that you're just using for tests but that is um is that correct? No, I don't know. Don't know what the idea of that is, I'm sure. See if we can just uh, gently slice it without slicing the wire, of course. Sorry, I've got my hand in well, You can't see what I'm doing there, can you? No, unless they're thinking that I wonder, you know, if the reason they've put that on there is because they think somehow that well, that's nowhere near, is it? But somehow they think that's going to be touching the, the screen plate at the bottom, um, on the bottom of the case. Maybe that's why they put it on. Put me out of the way again. Maybe that's why, but it doesn't appear to be cracked or damaged in any way. Although having all that tape on there and done that soda joint much good. But, uh, it's gone a bit, a bit gooey. It does look a bit of a blob that does, doesn't it? Um, but now I can't see it. It's not cracked, so I don't know. Don't know what that one's about. Whether they've done that to insulate that, thinking that it might touch, touch onto the, uh, which is is an understandable thing. If must be, I don't know, must be pretty close. I suppose. Bit of a design flaw, I suppose that is really. But then considering how the soda's lumped up as well. So I don't know, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll give that a bit of attention as well. But it's certainly not damaged. I half expected that to fall apart when I took that off, but it hasn't. So, of course, we need to check the uh, fuse has got the right valve. I'll tell you something else I've just realised about this amp as well. It's got it's got no HT fuse. No, it hasn't. No HT fuse. Mm. That's going to need a coat of thinking. Right. Just been having a think back. For me to put an HT fuse in this amp, I think we mounted the last one on the board. We're going to have to get this board up. That is a nightmare. Because if we just hone in over here, you can see the two diode the, the four diodes go into one there. And then that goes across to this point here. But that is wired underneath the board so we need to break that connection and wire from there to there and then the f and put the fuse holder there but that means we've got to get this board up and remove that wire right we're cooking on gas with this Carlsberg now we're almost finished let's have a look what we've done since uh, since the last uh, last update so the fuse the mystery of the electrical tape was 
put on as a precaution to isolate that terminal from shorting onto the screen plate in the case I, I would imagine and having thought on that I thought well that's not it's not a bad idea um, can't do any harm so rather than using the electrical tape I've used some shrink tubing um, and what I've done is I've put some tie wraps around it and then shrunk it keep nipping the tie wraps up now that's insulated it but also when somebody looks at that it says we're insulating that terminal what it don't say is that food odor's cracked which is what the electrical tape does so a good idea to do that a good precaution um, so the guy that put the tape on to got the right idea um, maybe it's been on years people didn't have these years ago but anyway we put that on so that's uh, that's sorted that one out put a fuse odor in there as well so we did have to just lift the board at this side but we managed to get those undo those from the bottom and they came out really easily and we just nipped it up and I there, there was a the cable from let me just get a bit more light on as well so there's a cable from where the diodes go in and you can see that there just there you just about see that and that cable under the board went to that part there so what we've done is we've got underneath remove that cable and then we've just added the fuse odor in between those two points um, so he's done we found a a nice spray um, capacitor for the bias so we managed to get that finished and we have swapped the 16 microfarad uh, cap that was here for an F and T 500 volts and incidentally all these caps are 500 volts working and as uh, if you watched any of my previous videos so this when you you get in rush when you switch switch these on because they're solid state rectification and um, I've measured some of these before and when you first switch it on they'll have like 350 volt cap in there and it's going over that when you first switch it on and it might only be for 10 15 seconds but it's going over so I just put 500 volts in all the way down that way you know you're covered with it they'll last longer we've got um, the two resistors there plate resistors for the phase inverter 82k 100k and I've just lifted them off the border shade um, and then I've changed that plate resistor there which is slightly off the board that plate resistor there there that one there and also that one there as well so that's been changed that resistor there was out of tolerance that 2.2 so he's been changed those two capacitors on the reverb have been changed so we're waiting now for some capacitors for, for these bypass caps because I've run out of those and we've run out of 100 nanofarad coupling caps just to go in there and then there is these two um, chaps here 2.5 and 2.5 not really sure what the that one's on obviously something to that's on the reverb uh, not 100% sure what that one's doing at the minute without having a a bit of a look I've swapped another resistor as well has just come to me and it is that one there that three 330k um, because that was out of tolerance massively as well so we've sorted that but everything else in there is pretty good and uh, I have spotted some other things as well on here so if we look at this input jack here someone has bodged on some wires and if we just try and go around and have a look in there if we can you can see that they've been trapped in the actual jack socket there so some kind of attempt to ground the jack plugs to the chassis now the idea of these type of jack plugs is, is to isolate them from the chassis because they're already ground grounded so is the a ground missing off these inputs and I've got a feeling you know that they might be 
and also if you look up there at that one the same thing's been done on that one as well that one's been botched the same someone's got in here and done that but we see for some whatever reason which may uncover itself now one of the problems on this amp as well was a problem with uh, the reverb interfering with these preamp controls so is that because of this I don't know but that needs a coat of looking at didn't spot those through the camera just kind of spotted those and when I was having a bit of a look round they I suspect so we need to look at those as well right check these out these attachments here um, yeah, got a touch of the Simon Templars. Um, these have been put on, from what I can see, around the jack socket there as it fastens on, as an attempt to grind it. That's the only thing I can explain. Two of these have got those on. That one's got another one on there. Um, and one, they achieve nothing because they're obviously they've put them around and you can see we're just holding in they've put them around these um in these jack socket um screwing inserts that go into the the actual socket itself and uh, it's that it's sorry folks and just fell on that and that is insulated if we go on to the front you can see that it's got that washer around there this insulates it from uh, from the chassis because they're not supposed to be earthed that way so someone's put those on there, there in an attempt to, to get a ground for some strange reason on two of the sockets but the irony of all that is that it's already grounded anyway and if we actually go down to there see that pink wire there just about see it if we get around it's dead hard to see where we are because it's but if we get around there that is already grounded so what on earth someone's put those on for i don't know very strange so they've got to cut they just need removing and the sockets just need put it back back together so a very peculiar thing that so yeah so we've just got to sort that out and uh, this amp's nearly finished now um we're just waiting for some parts um as i said previously and uh we're just waiting for two coupling caps, 100 nanofarad, two cathode bypass caps, and the cathode resistors on those stages are a bit high in value, so we're going to change those. And we're waiting for some electrolytics for these. That one there, and there's one on the end there, as you can see. And that's it, that's it. the amp is then done. So it's just a matter of then firing it up, checking it's running okay. Um, and just getting making sure the bias is accurate to those tubes that are in it which were those groove tubes were they I believe that were in this groove tubes are JJ's let's have a look because we have them here ah no they were JJ's not groove tubes right we're nearly done with this Carlsborough um, plugged it into the cab and uh, I noticed that these the speaker sockets are they're badly worn so if we just hold in on those they're they're really really worn uh, they're intermittent so we're good i've all i ordered i've ordered these and these came this morning these are neutrix ones so we're going to put these in and the with that problem and that should be it for this amp Right, this uh, this amplifier is finished. Um, run this, I run it up, and it run fine, except the speaker sockets were intermittent, just worn out basically. So there's a couple of newer tricks um, sockets gone in there. Got those done. Um, so we'll just go through and and what just see what we have done on this amplifier again, just to recap. So just to recap, that's the point, isn't it? So we've recapped. Um, the main electrolytics got F and T's and we've changed if we just hone in there we've changed the uh, diodes as well so we've got brand new diodes in 100 
sorry 180k resistor for the uh, for the bias feed AC bias feed new diode for the bias so that's that done all that done we've got a fuse HT fuse because this amp didn't have one but it has now and of course where that's actually now positioned was where that uh, overheating resistor was which has now been moved down here onto the chassis which has cured that problem and that just runs lukewarm so we've got that done um, electrolytics this is a two stage one one part feed one part smooth the phase inverter is the one for the, on the preamp section we've got new dropping resistors in there as well then we've got new coupling caps uh, to the output tubes new bias smoothing cap on there I changed all the other small electrolytics cathode bypass capacitors which are there so I'm just trying to look through the camera which are there so two cathode bypass capacitors um, another preamp filter stage there we've changed the plate resistors so we've got one there and we've got another one there uh, we've biased this amplifier um, now these tubes aren't a perfect match to the output tubes um, but we biased I think one's just shy of 16 watts and one's just about 17 and a half so they, they, they're um, they're not brilliantly balanced but it sounds okay um, and unless the customer wants to spend another 60 quid on tubes which it probably doesn't it sounds all right so we'll just leave that and of course the other thing we've insulated that remember we had the electrical tape over there um, which the, which some previous guy had done um, to uh, insulate that soda thing so it's not it can't arc over onto the the screen plate in the in the box which were a good idea just not sure about electrical tape but maybe it were done years and years ago um, when electrical tape was all the rage now it's not so we've put a shrink tube in there and we've we've put some um, tie wraps over that it's a much better way of doing it so that the, the thing with that that says that's been insulated electrical tape says this sock this fuse holder might be cracked so when someone else opens that it, it's there's you know they're piddling all the tape off only to find that it's not which is why I did it's not cracked but they're thinking it might be where with that they look at that and think oh that's just for insulation that's the idea anyway and we've also put new screen resistors on as well you can see that one there remember this one on this side here was um, cooked baked so that's sorted that one as well so that's basically the, the whole of the amplifier complete and this really this amplifier is now in some ways it's almost like it was when it were new um, and it's probably better than when it were new because these caps are probably better quality than the ones that went in it you can't beat the F&T's um, got a spray in there for the spray in there for the bias so this has had all the top stuff going it so the, the only thing that remains now is to pop it in its case and have a listen Right, we've got this Carlsborough up and uh, running, it's all in its case. So we're going to have a bit of a listen. I 
I said to you, this, this amp's got no uh, treble control, it's just got a middle and presence. If we turn this middle... I think it's not wired up back to front, they are on most of these, they all seem to be wired up back to front. But it kind of got so used to it, we just leave them. They're all wired the same way. Does it really miss a treble control? No, not really. It works pretty well with that one. Beautiful bell like tone, though, really sounds great. These are inputs, go even if you turn them flat out, they stay pretty clean because they are grid biased. And this being a PA, there's a tiny bit of break up, but not, not a massive amount. Just gives you a nice thicker toe. These are great for putting your pedals through and so on. Really great amps. So a great platform for um, effects processors, pedals, all that sort of thing. They're mint for that. Just turning that up has just thickened the tone up rather than overdriven it. Everybody says the grid bias never sounds any good and it's a bad idea, but every amp I've ever used that's been grid biased on the inputs, I've always had a really good sound out of it. Just thin that out a bit. Reverb's pretty overkill. If I put that up to like number three. <laughs> and if you put it all the way up, so not, not brilliant reverb, it's okay up to about number two, but once it gets past that, it gets a bit overkill, so... But it works okay, just a little bit, trying to get the right, just the right point. It is solid state reverb on that, remember, it's not a, it's not tube, so it doesn't have like a separate um, reverb transformer, it's, it's just done solid state. it's got its own reverb tank it's not obviously in them days they didn't it's not like a digital reverb or anything so 
still sounds pretty good. That's the calls per CS60. It's the second one of those we've done on the channel. Um, full recap, full service, and uh, yes, another one that's been a, a total success. A, a brilliant sounding amplifier that came in very sick and is going out an absolute winner. So, thanks for watching um, and listening to me waffle on again and watching me tinker about with these amps. And hopefully I'll see you all in a future video. So you all take care and bye-bye for now.